In this video, we're diving into five shocking 1950s cars that were total flops. We'll break down what went wrong with each one and why they became infamous failures. Let's get started. Number five, Ford Edsel, 1958. Ah, the Ford Edsel. No conversation about automotive flops is complete without bringing up this legendary disaster. Introduced in 1958, the Edsel was Ford's bold attempt to create a groundbreaking vehicle that would perfectly slot between their Ford and Mercury brands. Ford spared no expense, investing millions into the Edsel's development and marketing, and hyping it up as the car of the future. And technically, they were right. It was unlike anything anyone had ever seen. Unfortunately, that wasn't a good thing. Let's dive into the infamous horse collar grille, the Edsel's most distinctive feature. Ford aimed for futuristic, but consumers saw it as anything but. The grille quickly became the butt of jokes, with some even comparing it to a toilet seat. Ouch. But the Edsel's problems didn't stop with its controversial design. The car was packed with features that were supposed to be cutting edge, but many didn't work as intended. Ford boasted about its new technology, but the reality was far from impressive. To add fuel to the fire, quality control was a nightmare. Many Edsels arrived at dealerships with defects such as faulty electrics and poorly fitted parts. It was like the car was cursed from the very start. And then there was the price tag. Ford set a premium price for the Edsel, expecting buyers to pay a little extra for innovation. Instead, consumers saw a car that was overpriced, overhyped, and ultimately underwhelming. Sales plummeted as quickly as the car's reputation tanked, and Ford had no choice but to pull the plug on the Edsel after just three years. The Edsel's spectacular failure has since become a cautionary tale, a symbol of what happens when ambition overshadows reality in the auto industry. So, if you thought the Edsel was shocking, stick around for some more jaw-dropping tales of automotive blunders. Number 4. King Midget Model 3, 1957 The King Midget Model 3 was one of the most intriguing and ultimately disappointing entries in the 1950s automotive scene, marketed as the world's lowest priced car. It was the brainchild of Midget Motors Corporation, a tiny company with a big idea to create an ultra-affordable minimalist vehicle that anyone could own. Introduced in 1957, the King Midget Model 3 was essentially a street-legal go-kart, powered by a tiny one-cylinder engine that puttered along at a top speed of around 50 miles per hour. On paper, the concept seemed brilliant. Who wouldn't want a car that was both cheap and simple? But when the rubber met the road, the reality was far less appealing. The King Midget was so basic, it was almost primitive. It offered no comfort or convenience features, no radio, no heater, and barely any room to stretch out. The car's minuscule engine made even the smallest hills feel like mountains, and its top speed meant that it was left in the dust by just about everything else on the road. While the King Midget's price was undeniably low, so was its value. Most consumers quickly realized that spending a little more could get them a far more capable and comfortable vehicle. The King Midget's quirky charm might have been enough to win over a few diehard fans, but it wasn't enough to sustain widespread interest or sales. So how did the story end? By 1970, Midget Motors Corporation had folded, and the King Midget Model 3 became a quirky footnote in automotive history. But don't tune out just yet. This story is a fascinating reminder that sometimes less really isn't more. But hold on, if you thought the Edsel was a disaster, just wait until you hear the car that's our number one flop. Trust me, you won't want to miss this one. Number three, Renault Dauphine, 1956. The Renault Dauphine made its debut in 1956, aiming to capture the growing demand for small affordable cars in the United States. With its charming compact design and promises of impressive fuel efficiency, it initially caught the eye of many buyers. The Dauphine seemed like a perfect choice for those in search of a stylish and economical vehicle. However, this initial allure didn't last long, as the car's numerous flaws soon became glaringly obvious. One of the Dauphine's major drawbacks was its engine. Sporting a minuscule 845cc power plant, the car struggled to keep up with the demands of American highways. 
Its performance was so lackluster that it took a whopping 32 seconds to accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour, a figure that became a running joke among drivers. Imagine trying to merge onto a freeway with that kind of acceleration. But the Dauphine's troubles didn't stop at performance. The car was plagued with reliability issues, and owners frequently faced mechanical breakdowns. To make matters worse, the Dauphine's body was highly susceptible to rust, turning maintenance into a never-ending battle. The car's handling was another weak point. It was prone to dangerous oversteer, making it a challenging and sometimes perilous car to drive, especially in adverse conditions. This made the Dauphine a car that you didn't want to take out on a rainy day. By the early 1960s, the Renault Dauphine had gained a reputation as one of the worst cars on the road. Its inability to live up to its promises and its numerous faults dashed Renault's hopes of making a significant impact in the U.S. market. The Dauphine's quick fall from favor serves as a cautionary tale about the perils of overpromising and underdelivering in the highly competitive automotive industry. Number 2. Hudson Jet, 1953. Hudson known for its revolutionary step-down design that had made its cars low and sleek, decided to shake things up in 1953 with the introduction of the Hudson Jet. The goal was clear, create a compact, economical car to compete with popular models like the Chevrolet Bel Air and Ford Crestline. But instead of hitting the mark, the Jet ended up crashing and burning. The Jet was equipped with a 202 cubic inch or 3.3 liter inline six engine, which was larger than the engines found in many compact cars of its time. While the engine was intended to provide a good balance of power and economy, it didn't perform as expected. The Jet's larger size and weight negated the benefits of its engine, resulting in lackluster acceleration and fuel efficiency. It struggled to keep up with the more nimble competitors in the compact car segment. The Jet's design was a major point of contention. Despite its compact car classification, it was relatively large and heavy, measuring around 189 inches in length. This larger size contributed to its cumbersome handling and less than ideal fuel economy. The car's boxy, utilitarian design also failed to capture the contemporary style that consumers were looking for. The plain exterior lacked the flair of its rivals which made it less appealing in a market where aesthetics were important. Inside, the Jet featured a fairly basic interior. It had a functional but unremarkable design with simple upholstery and minimal features. While it offered a decent amount of interior space for a compact car, it lacked the modern conveniences and refinements that consumers expected. The interior felt more like a throwback to earlier automotive designs rather than a forward-thinking compact vehicle. One of the Jet's most significant issues was its price. At a starting price of around $2,000, it was considered quite expensive for a compact car. This high price point was hard to justify given the car's performance and design shortcomings. Consumers found better value in competing models that offered more features, better performance, and more attractive designs for a similar or lower price. The Jet's handling was another weak point. Its larger size and weight made it less agile, and its suspension system did not provide the level of comfort or stability expected from a modern compact car. The Jet was prone to understeer and had a less responsive steering system, which made driving it a less enjoyable experience. Number 1. Packard 200, 1951 Packard was once the epitome of luxury and prestige, renowned for crafting some of the finest automobiles on the road. Their vehicles were synonymous with elegance and high performance. However, by the early 1950s, Packard found itself struggling to maintain its illustrious status amidst intensifying competition. Enter the Packard 200, a bold move by the company to attract a wider audience with a more affordable price tag. It was a significant shift, aiming to broaden the brand's appeal. Unfortunately, the Packard 200 fell short of its ambitious goals. So, what went wrong with this otherwise promising model? The Packard 200 was intended to be a more accessible option for buyers, but it ended up alienating Packard's loyal fan base. Instead of embodying the luxury and refinement that Packard was known for, the 200 came across as lackluster and uninspired. Its design was bland, failing to capture the distinctive elegance that set Packard apart from its competitors. Performance-wise, the Packard 200 was underwhelming. It lacked the power and sophistication that customers had come to expect from a Packard vehicle. 
The car didn't just fall short in terms of speed and handling, it also failed to make an emotional connection with potential buyers. The Packard 200 was seen as a downgrade rather than an upgrade, a step backward rather than a forward leap in automotive innovation. The result? Sales were disappointing, and the Packard 200 didn't help reverse the company's declining fortunes. Instead, it symbolized the beginning of Packard's struggle as an independent luxury car maker. The 200 was more than just a failed model. It was a turning point that marked the start of Packard's decline, eventually leading to its merger with Studebaker and the end of its era as a standalone luxury brand. So, which of these automotive misadventures surprised you the most? Did you think that the Packard 200 would be a hit or the Edsel would be a masterpiece? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to hit that like button. And while you're at it, subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep your wheels rolling and your engines purring.